Thank you for joining me for The Time Is Now. I'm Pastor Diane Chamberlain from the Ladder House Kingdom Ministries, and I'm really glad that you're with me today. I'm so excited about this year of 2016 and also the Hebraic year of 5776. Now, I want you to understand that, you know, the, the Hebraic is like, uh, it's, it's pictures. They don't, they have words, but the words are more picture, picturistic, and there's a picture uh, as far as what their letters or what their words mean. And so we're in the Hebraic year of I involved, and it's V-A-V. And what that is, is five, seven, seven, six. So if you look at 70, uh, that 76 at the very end of the Hebraic um, letters, you will see that 70, and I've talked about this before in my program, is, is a 10 year uh, season in, in 70. And 70 is a, a, a time to see, it's a time to soar, it's a time to discern. So we're as in members in the body of Christ, you know, we are in a time of seeing, we're in a time of, of, of hearing, we're in a time of receiving new fresh revelation. You have to understand that Jesus wasn't American, and Jesus is not Australian, but Jesus is, was actually Jewish. And because he was Jewish, he studied the Hebraic language, and he followed the Hebraic calendar. Uh, and so he, he his whole uh, life was in Hebraic study. And so as believers, it's important for us to know, I believe, about the Hebraic uh, language and, and how it works and how we also can, can be involved in, in that in our today, today's society and how we can let that be a part of our lives and how important and valuable that is because they knew about the times and seasons and everything Hebraic lines up to uh, the, the times of the Lord, the seasons of the Lord and in the different months of the Lord. And, and we don't have to necessarily have to honor every feast or to have to do everything legalistically, but we just still need to know what God is saying about the times and the seasons and how he's moving by his spirit because we're spirit beings. And if we're spirit beings, then we need to be led by the spirit of God. And we want to know that how God's operating, at, how is he moving in time? What is it, some of the things that's close to his heart? And so we're in this year of 2016. Six represents, of course, the, the, the number of man. Um, and because man was created in six days. And so if you look at the number six, many people believe that number uh, correlates with the number of man. And so I want to talk to you today about design. And uh, God really put this up on my heart that we are a people that have forgotten our design. We've forgotten our, our purpose. We've forgotten why we was created. And, uh, you know, I shared this message uh, at our church a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just about, about 30 minutes uh, because my husband was speaking after me, but I just shared to them with them about design and because God put on my heart how we as believers have originally lost our design. And so I'm going to talk with you today how that design was interrupted. It was interrupted with Adam and Eve because you always have to go back to the start. You always have to go back to the very beginning of time to, to realize and to see where did we miss it at? What happened? And so I want you to be a people that to understand this is a year God's intervening with man. I was talking about that in my last programs in 2016. God says it's a year that he's going to intervene with man. It's a year that he said that he's going to work with man to show you things you've not seen before. So I want you to be a people that, that, that understand and think, I'm not going to function and operate the way I did last year. Uh, you know, my desire as a believer is to grow in faith toward God, to grow in glory toward God, to see things I haven't seen before. And I want you to know that God wants you to see things you have not seen before. Even with his word, it's important that you have to understand that we have to be word people. We have to be people rooted and grounded in God's word. We have to be people rooted and grounded in prayer. You know, these are the things that's going to break open the heavens. These are the things that's going to cause us to see things we've not seen before when we study and meditate on God's word. Now, here it was. I want you to look at Genesis uh, chapter 1, if you have your Bible. And we're going to look at verses 26 through 28. Because we're talking about um, our original design from the very beginning of time and how it was interrupted in the garden with Adam and Eve. Then we got to understand what happened to Adam and Eve and how God created Adam and Eve. Now, it says, let us make man in our own image. Now, if you look at that word, us, you, you may think, who is us? Because that's just saying it's not just God. So we should understand that God said, I'm there. Uh, he said, 
the Son is there, Jesus Christ is there with me, as well as the Holy Spirit. They all three are, are one. They all three I have different functions, but they all three are one together. And he says, here we are. Let us. He said, we're going to come together and we're going to create something that's never, that's never been created at all before. We're going to create something upon the planet Earth that is unique, that is different, that is special, and we're going to do this, the Lord says, together. And so the Holy Spirit, here they were, working together, the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God, the Father, they said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This is what God said. So God created in verse 27. He created in his own image, man. God created him male and female. He created them. And verse 28, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, he told them to be. He told them to multiply. He said, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish. And so he told them to have dominion over these things, over the fish, the sea, over the fowls, over the air, over the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So you have to understand, God says you have dominion, you have authority, you have, you have power. I'm giving you authority and, and on earth as I have authority in heaven. God says, as my people, I am giving you authority to rule and reign on earth. Now I want you to go back to look at chapter, verse 26, when it says, let, as he's, he's making man, he said, let us make man in our own image. Now what was that image? You have to ask yourself. Here, what is God? Does, God? does God have a body that we can see? No, he doesn't have a body that we can see. He, he's invisible. He's a spirit. So if God's a spirit, and he said, let us make man in our own image, the image God was making man was a spirit being. God said, you are a spirit being. We're going to make man into a spirit being like us. We're going to put, put him in a body and from the dust of the ground. He said, I'm gonna, we're going to put, put his spirit in into this body from the dust of the ground, and I'm gonna breathe into him life, which is, I'm gonna give him a soul, which is mind, will, and his emotion, and man became a living being. But God says he's a spirit being first and foremost. So as a believer, you have to understand you are a spiritual being. You have to understand that we are to walk as spiritual beings. And that's the hardest thing today for the body of Christ to do. It's the hardest thing for any man to do. It was hard for me to walk in the spirit at all times. But you know what? We have to know that God is progressing us. He's taking us from glory to glory. He's taking us step by step as we trust in him. I believe God is going to show us in this day and hour how to live so supernaturally that we're going to believe, we're going to understand what we was really created to be. We're going to really understand what we was really, really created to do. I don't believe that man is really tapped in to all the understanding of what we are as spirit beings, but I believe this is a day and hour in 2016, a new beginning for us as believers, to come into understanding that we first and foremost are spiritual beings. We're to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, breathe in the spirit, and do things by the Spirit, hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, because the Holy Spirit says, I will lead and guide you into all truth. I will speak not what I hear, but I will hear Jesus speak. I will speak it unto you. So we have an advocate for us, the Holy Spirit, that, should res that resides in our human spirit, that should be speaking to us, that should be uh, leading us, guiding us, and directing us. But instead, now just being honest, instead what we do, we let our, our minds, our emotions, our feelings lead and guide us. And I believe God is raising up a people today. And I believe you are one of those people today that God's going to use to raise up, that will be led by his spirit, that will hear from heaven, and that will move by God's spirit. Now let's go back here. I want you to understand that Adam and Eve didn't have the revelation of who they were. They didn't understand who they were. And you can understand that as we continue on. They didn't know who they were because they, they fell. They fell in the, in the garden. They fell to live as spiritual beings in the garden. They fell by listening to the serpent. So they had no revelation of who they, who they really were. We here today in the body of Christ have no true revelation. Because if we really had a revelation that we're spirit beings, then we would truly be doing greater works. When Jesus left his disciples, the greater works shall ye do. If we really understood, believed, and operated, we would be doing greater things. I don't know about you today, but I'm at the point as a believer that I am, I am trusting God. I'm believing God for the greater works. I'm looking for signs and miracles and wonders to be demonstrated in our ministry, in my life. And wherever I, wherever I go, 
I want to be able to demonstrate God's miracles. I want to be able to see healings. I want to be able to see deliverances. I want to be able to see uh, people who's, who has, have no leg, the, ho the whole leg being restored. You know, that's, that's miraculous. That's the supernatural. And if we supernatural, then we should be believing that God can do those things today. I want you to understand that nothing went out with the early church. Just like the disciples did miracles, signs, and wonders, if you're a believer today, you can do miracles and signs and wonders. If God says, greater works shall ye do, then God's not telling you they no longer exist. God's saying they exist, and in fact, you're going to do more. You're going to do more than what you're reading about today in, in the Word of God. You're going to be able to do more by someone else's testimony that you read. God says, no, I want you to know you're those that's going to be qualified to do it. He's not going to just use men and women of God behind the pulpit. I want you to understand, he's going to use ordinary men and women like you. He used ordinary people like Paul, Peter, John. They were ordinary men that God took out of ordinary lives, out of ordinary situation, and made them extraordinary men. He made them extraordinary because they had a heart to follow after Jesus. You know, we have to have a heart to follow after God. We have to have a heart to obey him. We have to have, have a heart to seek him. This is a day and hour. If God says, I'm intervening with man, then God's going to show you things about yourself that you need to maybe adjust, realign, uh, reshape, to, to sometimes just take and get completely out of your life, to re revamp your whole, your whole way of living and say, you know what, I've been doing this for this many years, but it's not working. You know what, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm not going to do those things anymore. I'm going to shift and change. No longer I'm going to allow myself to be walking in the flesh. I was, I was sharing with someone yesterday, and, and they called me on the telephone, and they was asking me for some spiritual advice. And they were, I, I kind of listened to them because they were going on and on, complaining and, and griping and saying, and this is going to happen, and that's going to happen in this situation. And as I listened to them, the Lord, the Lord told me they have no faith. He said they have no faith, and they're looking at this situation through natural eyes instead of spiritual eyes. And as I began to talk to the person, I began to tell them, you know, you have no faith. You have no faith in God. You're making scenarios take place in your mind because you're reasoning out what's going to happen. The person's not even there yet, but you already got all these scenarios in your mind of what's going to happen, what's going to take place, and, and what's going to happen in your life. And God didn't say that, but you listened in your mind and then you, you bit on the thought and now you put all these scenarios into place. And once I, I told the individual that, their eyes became open and they go, oh my God, you're right. I, I'm building all these scenarios and I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I made myself, she made herself so worked up that she was in fear, she was intimidated. And although every anytime you're in fear, intimidation, I want you to know that is not of God. That is not from God. That's from the very pit of hell. That's from that's from Satan himself. He wants you to be in fear. He wants you to be intimidated. He wants you to think that, you know what, you're not gonna be able to soar this year. You're not gonna be able to discern this year. You're not gonna be able to see things you need to see this year. And you need to tell him he's a liar. You know, if we listen to our minds, they will contradict everything against the word of God. Our mind will have us is the opposite of what the Word of God says to us. You know, spiritual things are going to be spiritually discerned through believers. You have to understand that. Nat the natural man, it says spiritual things are foolishness to him. There are some things that you won't be able to even to discuss with people who are unsaved because it says the spiritual things are foolishness to them. Why? Because they cannot understand them because they spiritually discern. There's things only we can grasp a hold of because the Holy Spirit's inside of us and he reveals the truth to us. He reveals the revelation to us. And so a natural man cannot discern that because he's thinking with his intellect. He's thinking with his mind. He's thinking with his brain. And because of that, then he doesn't understand God. You know, things would be so much easier for us as believers if we, if we just understand what the Word says and, we under, and take it into practice and implement it. If we implement it, which means we do it, we rehearse it, we live by it, we take action by it. You know, and so I just want to go back here and just share a little more with, with you about this Word. When we don't have revelation of who we are, we're, we are, we'll be left, left in the world and we let those in the world around us define who we are. I'm going to say that again. And when we don't have the revelation of who we are, then we let those in the world around us define for who we're going to be. We let them define us. We let them tell us who we are. Think about it, for example, in today's society. You have people who are defining Christians, you know, and all the word Christian means is Christ-like, followers of Christ, 
and we should be followers of Christ. Are we all being great examples of being a follower of Christ? Not today. No, we're not. There are some Christians who still smoke, still curse. There are some Christians who still commit fornication. Some Christians who still commit adultery. There are some uh, Christians who to still act and do things in the flesh. There's some Christians who still walk in anger. So no, we're not perfect. But what we do is we strive to live a life of holiness and righteousness, and we work toward that process. And we don't let anybody condemn us or tell us that we're a hypocrite for living a life as a believer. And so the thing is, if you sin willfully, according to 1 John 1, 9, you confess that sin, you ask God to forgive you, you cleanse yourself. Why? By the righteousness of Jesus Christ's blood, we are righteous because of him. I'm not righteous because I'm good enough. I was never good enough. That's just it. I was never going to be good enough. But it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that makes me righteous. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that covers my sins. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that I'm forgiven. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that I can stand before you today and be victorious. And so that's the same way with every believer. But what we can't do is let people define who we are as Christians. We can't let them tell us that Christians are unforgiving. We can't let them tell us that Christians are unkind. We can't let them tell us that Christians are judgmental. And yes, there are some Christians who can be very judgmental and all that. But don't put me in that same category. Don't, but don't be because I say that I'm a believer that you have me pegged, that you have me stamped, that you have me sealed. Oh, she got to be one of those people unbelieving. She has to be one of those people uncaring. She has to be one of those people that's very judgmental. And then all of a sudden your antennas go up in the air. Why? Because then you're going to judge me. You're going to put me in a box. You're going to say, she has to be like this then. And that's what the enemy would do. He would try to define you from what you are. When God says you are a spiritual being, to have dominion, to have authority, to have power, to be fruitful, to multiply, to reproduce. These are all the things God said that you were to do and that you had authority in. And, and But yet we will let the world dictate to us who we are. We will let them say, no, you're not. You are a person who's judgmental. You are a person who's unkind. Christian people are hypocrites. No, that's untrue. So you can't let the world define who you are. You have to know that you are a supernatural uh, being created by Jesus Christ who has the blood of Jesus Christ. His righteousness covers our inabilities, our sins, our imperfection. It's his righteousness that makes me perfect. It's his righteousness that helps me become the person that I need to become. Now, I want you to know we, but we have to know who we are and what we are created to do and to be. That's so important. We have to know who we are, what we was created to do. We was created to have fellowship with Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve was created to have a relationship with him. We're created to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're created to fellowship with him. We're created to walk in the same authority and power. He said, you should be my hands and my feet in this earth realm. You should demonstrate who I am. How can we demonstrate truly who God is if we're walking as a natural man? A man, a man who's a natural man is a man who's unsaved, a man who doesn't know Christ. Well, as believers, we should be walking in, in the supernatural. We should be walking as spiritual beings. Once they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, who can hear his voice, who knows how to discern and who knows how to talk to people, who know how to bring people to the kingdom of God and, and to show them the light and to show them the way to salvation. <clears throat> now, once you look here, Adam and Eve were designed to live in relationship. It was designed like we were in fellowship with God. Man's purpose then was to love and obey God. That's our purpose is to love and obey God. Do we always do it? No. But our purpose is to love and obey God. And they didn't do it. They did not do that. That think about it, the reward for what's the reward for for obeying God? It's eternal life. That's the promise that God gave us that if we obey Him, we follow Him, that we would have eternal life with Him. Eternal life is life everlasting. Now, he's a God of Olam, which means everlasting, eternal. And God's not like us in time. He doesn't look at time the same way we do because he's everlasting. You know, there's a covenant that God made with, with Abraham. There's a covenant that God made uh, with his children of Israel. There's a covenant that God made and established. And that same covenant lives and breathes today because we are part of that descendants. We are children. It says that Abraham was going to be the father of many nations. We are part of that nation. We're part of that from Abraham. We are a part of his descendants. And God's covenant never changes. God's covenant is alive and was real today as it was 4,000 years ago. God's covenant is alive and real today as it was 2,000 years ago. God's covenant never changes. Over 100 years ago, God's covenant never changed. We have to understand that we are connected. We're connected in synergy. We're connected in the times of the ages. And so we have to understand that when God looks at, at time, he doesn't just say, oh, today is March 24th, and, and that's great. God looks at the 
as time as a whole. It says a day is a thousand years until the Lord. So his days are not like our days. And so we have to understand that as he look at, at, at uh, here in the Garden of Eden, God says, can my people today obey me? Can my people have a relationship with me? Can my people follow me today? That's what God's looking at. He's designed us like he did Adam and Eve to follow them, to follow him. But what happened is they sinned. What happened is they disobeyed him. So if you look down here, God would want them to trust in his mind. He wanted them to trust in his, what he was saying to them and what he was telling them. If you go to Genesis chapter 3 and look at verses 2 through 3, we're going to look at that real quick. Go to chapter two and verse uh, chapter three in Genesis, and look at verses two, and we're gonna go to three. And the woman said unto the serpent, because this is how she got deceived, and this is how many of us do today. We get deceived. The woman said unto the serpent, "We may eat." She's talking to him because God had already told and commanded them not to eat of the tree, of the fruit of the garden. But here she says to the serpent, she said that we the God. She said to the serpent that we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She tells Satan. But, in verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, God didn't say anything about touching it, but he told her you should not eat of the tree of the, in the midst of the garden. But she entered into a fact that when she started talking to him, that God said this, and he's telling her, did he really say that? I want you to look at this in verse 6. In Genesis 3, 6, go down to 6. And when the woman saw, because she saw, she looked. Because he's already convinced her, hey, is God hiding something from you? God doesn't want you to see anything. See, when God created Adam and Eve, they already was perfect. When God created Adam and Eve, they already had the wisdom of the ages. Why? Because, because God had wisdom. So anything they needed, all they had to do, do is ask. God would, would have revealed it to them. He would have showed it to them. He would have gave them understanding of it. No, the thing about that, when Eve wanted something she thought she was missing out on. That's what happened today in the body of Christ. We always want something that we think we're missing out on. The enemy will try to convince us. Even in this year, 2016, he would try to convince you, well, you don't have to discern. You don't have to come up higher in the Lord. You don't have to go to new levels. You don't have to change as being a Christian. You can walk as a natural carnal mind and still be saved. You know what? You have to read Romans 8. It says those who are walking in the flesh are not going to be able to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. Romans 8, 16 tells those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. So if we're not led by the Spirit, are we really a son and daughter of the Lord? You know, the Bible is really easy to understand. If we really just read it, meditate on it, and study it, we can really understand as believers if we're walking by it or if we're not walking by it. I mean, one time I was just reading the Word, and uh, I was thinking to myself, well, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm living this way, and I'm doing that. And then the last part of this, the statement I realized, I'm not doing that, Lord. And the spirit within me just revealed to me, you're not doing that. And it shocked me because it's like, well, Lord, I'm not doing that. And then I heard a still small voice within me, the spirit revealing to me, then you're not a doer of the word. I was like, oh, my God, what a shock. What a revelation. I'm leaving part of the word out, and, and I still was not a doer of the word. Today, as believers, we have to understand that we have to be doers of God's word, complete doers. We have to be able to not just hear and listen, but to do what the word of God says to do. To love when the word of God tells us to love. To forgive when the word of God tells us to forgive. And, and that's the, one of the hardest things to do today with believers is to forgive those who have hurt them, to forgive those who have persecuted them. I mean, I went through a hardship, me and my husband, years ago, where we had a lot of persecution from Christian people. You know, and, and God had remind us, there's nothing different that you're walking through that I haven't walked through. And that really helped us because sometimes you think, oh, my God, my world is crumbling. My world is falling apart, and I'm being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. I'm being persecuted for believing in Christ and, and even from believers. And Jesus said, you're going through what I did with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And it's like, wow, Lord Jesus, thank you for the revelation. There's nothing do, new underneath the sun. If you are a Christian, there will be times you have to go through persecution. If you're a believer, there will be times and things you have to go through. But know that God is with you and he's more than a world against you. Know that if you follow God, he will see you through the valleys. He will see you over the hills. He will walk with you. He will give you the revelation that you need. And he will, be, he will make you strong. 
and you will come out on the other side victorious. And not only will you come out on the other side victorious, but sometimes you will bring those, those naysayers or those people that came against you. You know what? We forgave them. We forgave them. And thank God we forgave them because many of them now are coming back and asking for spiritual guidance and asking for spiritual advice and, and find themselves in situations that they need help. But if we never forgave them, then we wouldn't be able to help them today. I'm here to tell you today as believers that we, we're, we have to completely change the way we're living and really live as spirit beings, really live with the Holy Spirit with inside of us to change us, to mold us, to shape us, to look like Him. See, Adam and Eve, they sin. And many times we sin, and it says it falls short of the glory of God. But I want you to tell, tell you this, that God will bring us back around. He'll bring you back around where he will come and he will aid you and he will help you get out of that sin. He will help you get away from situations that you need to get away from. The people that may be um, judgmental or people who may be gossip or slanders. You know what? And sometimes we just got to make a stand, not compromise, but make a stand and say, hey, look, I can't be around you anymore if you're going to talk that way. The hardest thing to do is to, to confront someone about the way they're living. But I'm telling you today that if you will confront things, God will work on your behalf. If you would make a change, then God will give you the grace because this is a year that he's going to give grace to you, fresh new grace to you in a new way. This is a, a, a year that he's going to strengthen you. You are going to be so strengthened, so revived, so refreshed if you start living by the word of God like you've never been before. I want you to know this is your time that, that for you to move. This is a time for you to allow God to invade. This is a time that you want to say, Lord, I want more of you. I don't want to just be like Eve and, and hear your word, but disobey it. I want to be able to follow your word. I want to be able to see the promises of God fulfilled in my life. You know, there's some promises in the word of God that he's given to us as believers that we can obtain this year, that we can live in this year. You know, I don't know about you, but I want to grow spiritually. I want to go hear God's voice in a clear way. I want to be able to help others in a, in a, in a way of my discernment and being able to meet their needs. You know, these are things as believers that we should desire because our life is just not our own, but our life is for other people. Our life is to make a difference in other people's lives, not just the saved, but the unsaved. You know what? And how can they see Christ if they can't see it in me? How can they see the love of Christ if they don't see me loving them? How can they see me... Uh, if I don't have a, a heart of forgiveness and can know how to forgive, how can I teach someone else something I don't know? You know, I want you to know this is an hour in time that God's going to mold you and shape you into a spiritual being like never before. He's going to cause you to see things spiritually that you missed in the last season because he's going to call, because he's invading it when you. He's showing you himself new and fresh and strong this year. So know that you are able, know that you're qualified, know that he's going to use an ordinary man because that's all he's ever used was ordinary men and women of God. And he's going to use people just like you. People who feel unqualified, unimportant, uh, uh, don't feel uh, like you're valuable enough. God's going to use you because he can trust you with his anointing. He can trust you to fulfill his plan and purposes. I want you to know you are designed for a purpose. You're designed for a call. You're designed to glorify God in this day and hour. So I want you to know, go forth like you never have before with God on your side. You are able to be designed for his purposes, for his calling. And I want you to know it's your hour and your time now to manifest all that God is saying in your life. He's intervening. Allow him to intervene with you this year and see the salvation of the Lord. God bless you. The preceding program was made possible in part by Ranch House Barbecue. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Time Is Now, please visit www.ladderhousekingdomministries.org. The Time Is Now is a viewer-supported ministry.